Playing out the rest of your day, heading closer and closer to that weekend, we can taste it, right? We're so, so very, very close. It's but Friday Eve. Friday Eve, yes indeed, but a Friday Eve that is filled with more of the same. That heat is a big, big part of the story. Storms in a new place today, at least not the same place yes. as yesterday, although some of you are also getting storms again today, like yesterday. The heat is on, and Greg Postel is here. Yes, Woo! first time in a long time. It yes. Has been. I've had some time off. A really rest much. And relaxation. Yes, I'm ready to go, and we have some interesting things to talk about. Forward to that. That's coming up. Let's get you uh, out the door and show you a quick look at what's happening Ooh. in the upstairs. It's oh, a week now. That's tough. No yeah, AC. That's not I could good. use some lower dew points. <laughs> we could use, well, you know what? That comes in fall, and so is tropical season. It typically perks up yes. in the fall. That was a good transition so, there. I had to find some way to get there. I was like, well, let's go to that tropical map. Good news is it's relatively inactive. We'll yeah. talk much more about that in a few minutes. We shall. Yeah. Have no fear. The big deal is here. Now, overnight storms that gave folks... If a tree will be a good spot to be today. Uh, if you're going walking down the street, the shady side of the street is going to be better than the sunny side. we got so much heat building here into the Northeast, and New York City just one of the spots that will be feeling it. So let's break down the numbers. How high is it going to get and for how long? That's a part of the question because this is going to be a long heat wave. Temps today again in the 90s, 91 degrees. You know, we have the chance of thunderstorms today and that will provide us some brief breaks from the heat. Brief is the key word because it'll be steamy, I think, once those storms move through. And then we've got 94 on Friday. It gets hotter behind the front. We have 95 on Saturday and on Sunday, and it stays in the 90s on Monday. So this is a heat wave. Temps are going up for 105, 195 million, above 90 today, 190 on your Friday. And then on Saturday, we've got 222 million people that will be above 90. Now, I know 90 might be average-ish, but it's above average for a lot of us, especially, you know, into the Northeast. And temperatures going up, the fact that the dew points are up as well, combination of those two is the reason why we have excessive heat warnings and heat advisories, that heat index going up to some dangerous levels, uh, especially during the heat of the afternoon, but it lingers into the evening. You think you're going to go for a jog at six or seven o'clock tonight? No, it's still going to be hot. Today, temps, look at Philly, 98, DC, 95 degrees. We've got that heat building and the feels like we'll be up to 107 in Philadelphia. All right, so this is, is some of the extent of the heat here. You can see in Norfolk an example of just how high that heat index stays and for how long. And Alex, when we get a storm, it breaks it momentarily, but then it jumps right back up again. Yeah, that's it. It's just We have a lot of moisture content in the atmosphere. So when it rains, it's probably going to be a heavy rain. You'll notice that when you're driving. The wipers will definitely be working hard to keep those windshields clean. These thunderstorms this morning have been dropping down into North Georgia, uh, around the Augusta area, Athens. Uh, we're watching those for now, but new thunderstorms firing up that could be severe is going to be a concern as we get into the afternoon. These have brought lightning. That's been your biggest risk that's keeping you from doing anything outside this morning. Not to mention the rain is, but of course, you know, uh, even just going out for that morning walk with the lightning, you don't want to do that. Now, we do have delays at the airport because of these thunderstorms. We've been looking at a ground stop until 10 o'clock here at Atlanta. A ground stop means that for any airports that are included in it, that you're staying at your starting point until the ground stop is lifted so you're not taken off if you're heading to Atlanta. Maybe you're coming in from New York or maybe even Nashville, a short trip. Um, but once these storms go through, we'll have, you know, I think some time to get some flights in and out and make that better. When there's lightning right over the terminal, you don't want all the ground crews out there, so that's another factor, right, in creating those delays. Now, rainfall heavy at times. We saw it in places like Knoxville where we had some radar estimates of three to four, even up over six or seven inches of rain. That just shows you the potential of the the atmosphere. We have so much moisture content and if thunderstorms don't move and there's not a lot of steering in the atmosphere. So if they just sit there, I mean, look at Charlotte later on this evening that really could create some heavy downpours and cause some issues that they can back build. Now here comes the line of storms at Birmingham, Birmingham to Atlanta. This is 11 o'clock tonight. We could see thunderstorms that could bring some strong or potentially severe winds and those do sink south as we get through the overnight hours by tomorrow morning down towards Hattiesburg and into southern parts of Alabama. All right, Alex. Now, the Northeast will get some storms, too. Just quiet down heading into the evening. So, storms coming in, may break the heat a bit for us, uh, and that gives way to, I'd say, a pretty decent uh, end of the week on Friday. But hotter. Yes. yes. Now, unfortunately, the heat will be <laughs> Drier, around, but the storms are still gone. hotter. <laughs> Yesterday on the show, we were talking about our national parks, and we asked you what is your go-to activity when you visit a national park. We had a poll going. Yes, and uh, Doc Hammond says... Them in, mu ...in a much more broader way. They always have, of course, but in a, a bigger 
way. Yeah, especially as you start to see just how Great pre-July 4th uh, time there. That was a fantastic view. Thanks so much for those yeah. comments. Thanks for the pictures as well. Uh, we always love to see that. Of course, the thrill of visiting national parks comes in all the choices that you can vote in the poll in, but we'd always uh, love to hear any of your sort of extra comments in the uh, comment section. I remember when I was at the Grand Canyon, and you know, there's, there's a rail. Like, it's very safe, but I was like... I don't want to stand too close. <laughs> There's still a little I part of you I still don't like... want to stand too close. Yeah, <laughs> the height. It is up there. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to get you into the out there here for the warms, and you'd think for hurricanes, but it depends on where that warmer air is. We'll talk about that mm -hmm. in just a second, but yeah. it's not too early to start looking to the Atlantic for development, you know, and we're wondering when is our next storm coming? And if you look at the historical points in July. One thing, the models have been showing some potential for wind shear, but... Um, as you were saying, it's not, you know, out of context for what you would expect in July and with the La Nina. So let's talk about dust. Because that, that's <laughs> yeah. something we've talked about a lot, Saharan dust. Yes. So that seems to be the thing that's kind of winning, right. winning out. Interesting. Right. Yeah, and that the wind shear will remain not really so much of an inhibitor. The stability profiles will eventually change as we get some other factors moving in. And I think August heading into September will get a lot more. In Arizona yes. and how, look, the, the petrichor or that smell of rain is different everywhere. And especially here because of the type of plants that are here. And it really evokes a lot of emotion and it, it can be therapeutic actually. That's a, that would be an interesting one, yes. right? Different yeah. smells and rains around the, the country. Yeah. Well, welcome back here into America's Morning Headquarters. Uh, we'll be smelling more rain in a number of spots with the risk for rain in a, a few locations. Some of that rain, though, could come at the expense of, and of dealing with severe weather. Yeah, and some really heavy rainfall. Big downpours mm -hmm. causing issues for drivers. Let's go over to Dr. Greg Postel and talk more about that. Hoping for some rain, like in Dallas, where uh, the librarians are working hard passing out water so that people can cool off, because there's nothing coming out of the sky. Yeah, you said it. It's just been so, so very dry and, of course, hot. Of course, Virginia Beach, the shoreline there, uh, getting no breaks from the heat mm -hmm. either. It's just widespread in a number of areas having to deal with some of this heat, uh, you got to take it easy, take it slow in yeah. these locations. Yeah, but what's, I mean, look at that. It's windy this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, folks are running. You got to go early if you're going to try to get that, uh, <laughs> get that run in, that's for sure. Well, let's take a look at the big deal when it comes to this heat because we have it building in several areas. We've got, of course, the South Central Plains, but now we've got parts of the Northeast and Mid Atlantic, and the Southwest gets into the act with some heat advisories as yeah, well. Yeah, I can't forget the folks there. I mean, we got a number of areas in the Central Valley that are going to be dealing with heat advisories as well. So, from the west to the east, you name it, it is going to be a hot time out there for us. Yes, yeah, so we've got the excessive heat warnings. That's in bright pink. A couple of spots. Today, this is new into Alabama, where you're under that excessive heat warning. Goes through tomorrow. And then we go into the Mid-Atlantic, too, in southeast Virginia. Look at the values and the, the temperatures. You these highs for the day. Okay, more triple digits. Although, Jen, when you look at a spot like Oklahoma City, I mean, we've cooled down significantly. 95, I mean, as opposed to 110, which is what we were yeah. on Wednesday. <laughs> what is today? Uh, today's Thursday. Okay, that was Tuesday. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. I mean, yeah. so that's a pretty big drop, but even with that big drop, it's still going to be pretty hot out there for you. How about 102 showing up there in a spot like Memphis? Yeah, and of course, the heat index is going to be higher. This is why those excessive heat warnings and heat advisories are up. Play it safe during the afternoon. Take breaks and get into the AC. Historic. I mean, no way to slice and dice it. That was a, a pretty insane heat wave. The, the numbers that were stunning. There. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a strong ridge in place, and basically it was a south wind that brought up hot Saharan air all the way up into England. You had to have the right or the, the wrong. Okay, and here at home, you can check out the discussions meteorologists Stephanie Abrams and Jordan Steele are having about our planet, our future. That's starting at noon. Let's take you out to Dublin, Ireland, and take a look there. It is finally cool. Park. Let's bring in Joelle Baird, a public affairs specialist with the Grand Canyon National Park. Joelle, thank you so much for joining us this morning. One of the most popular activities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so certainly, um, you know, the park sees around. And when it comes to those who maybe want to uh, enjoy maybe a nice workout, how about some of the hikes there uh, through the canyon? Yeah, so I uh, can imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what would be the best season to do that hike? Because I imagine winter brings its own challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I personally... Of course, summer is a big time for camping, right? Uh, so what can campers, as they visit the canyon, uh, expect to find, uh, to, to enjoy? Mm -hmm. You know, I know some of the national parks have actually had to go to lottery systems to allow people in because of the crowds. And they're, they've become popular, you know, for a very good reason. But again, you have to deal with managing all those people. Sure. We're talking all week here uh, again about the national parks across the nation and, and uh, folks wanting to kind of learn more about the national parks. Are there any educational opportunities there at the Grand Canyon so, so folks can kind of know about the history of it? 
Absolutely. Um, out at There's been a theme on social media, hashtag plan like a park ranger when it comes to traveling to the national parks. What's your number one tip for people to take with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, plan ahead or around Labor Day, um, really uh, try to book as far ahead for overnight lodging as possible. Planning, planning, planning. Well, Joel Beard, pup for joining us this morning. Again, another great place uh, to head to. And tomorrow we're going to end it with the dealing with some rain. Uh, but you can see the forecast, does see some drier times heading into the weekend, but it is also going to heat up. Yeah, but it'll be a little bit cooler up there. You the Especially shade. when you go by the falls because you get that mist, the mist. with the fall. Yes, mm -hmm. I've done that hike once and there, they, I took the stairs. The, oh, the big stairs. The big stairs. Ooh. There's a lot of stairs. <laughs> a lot, yes. The coming down was actually just as hard. We catamaran every day mm. and multiple times. I think you can go two times per day by plane. Wow. It's cool. It's beautiful. <laughs> that does but it look is hard fantastic. to get there. Yeah. So you just got to be, you know, aware that yes. it does take some time. Key West is a launching pad and it's 88 degrees there today. That sounds like a trip. Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on Alex's list. <laughs> we got to take the shade. Well, are you going to see scenes like that? Maybe. I mean, we definitely have a lot of storms in the forecast. We'll show you where that is. Welcome back to America's Morning Headquarters. It is Thursday, Friday Eve. Yes, lovely, lovely. Hopefully it's been a good week here for you. We're so close to that weekend. Lots to track here for us, uh, including the fact that Dr. Greg Postel is back here with us, and we've got a great discussion with him about the tropics. Yeah, we're here now towards the end of July, and July kind of shut down a bit here in the Atlantic, which is not unusual, but we're going to get into uh, the, what's going on out there and... Uh, what we may be seeing as we work our way through the coming uh, weeks ahead. I think that you can get. Well, have no fear. The big deal, it is here. Overnight storms that gave folks a bit of a fright will start to fizzle out. But... Birmingham, where I'm standing right now. Take me to Birmingham. Uh, thanks to our virtual view technology, we can transport you to Birmingham at Railroad Park, where sun will give way to storms that Jim was mentioning. We also have that heat and humidity that's going to help really pack a punch. So this is what it could look like in the Birmingham area. We could have those puddles starting to accumulate. And you're definitely going to get those dark clouds to come in. And as Jim was mentioning, you're going to want to cool off because the overnight heat index in the area was 91 degrees. At 1 a.m., it felt like 91 degrees outside. So watch out for some very strong winds and very heavy downpours with this. Let's time it out for you and show you into Birmingham a little closer as we go into the afternoon hours. That's when things are going to fire up for us uh, today. And we will see it north side of town, south side of town, east side of town. You're not really going to be able to escape this here and everything's going to blow through. Uh, speaking of Alabama, I was listening to Coach Saban the other day. Someone said, what's something that you want people to know that they wouldn't know about you? And he basically said how good I am at cleaning house. He said when he gets home,
home. His wife gives him a note and he like takes the garbage out. He sweeps up the whole thing. And so it was kind of a cute little moment. Wait, there his wife Coach leaves David. him a note and then he does what's on the note. Yeah, yeah. You're people, right? Like, no, I, I think it's wonderful. People might think that I, I do. things you do are like Jim Cantori sweeps up. It was a really cute little, it was very cute yeah. and cheeky. All right, let's take you into the Atlanta metro area and see when we are going to see the storms. And watch out for lightning too, because yesterday a soldier was actually struck and killed by lightning near Fort Gordon near Augusta, Georgia. Nine others were actually reportedly injured due to that lightning strike. So it's something you have to watch out for, especially with these afternoon thunder summertime thunderstorms. We'll get another round coming through as we head into the overnight hours. By the way, that's the seventh known lightning strike this year and the second in Georgia. Real quick, uh, Jordan, just showing everyone that it's going to drop through Texarkana and northern Louisiana as well. Well, the rain could help some cool you off right away. Yeah, but then when you're walking around with extra moisture on your body and the humidity, you get all steamy again. Yeah, you're hot unless you were in a dry environment, but we've got the humidity here in the Northeast. So just remember that that is only going to cool you off for a second, but then you're walking around, you're sweating, you have more moisture on you and it can't evaporate and the evaporation is actually a cooling process. So that's why you have a dry heat is better than a more humid heat because you can have the evaporation and cool off. We have advisories posted from New England all the way down into the Carolinas, straddling I-95, forecasted highs today into the mid 90s, low 90s. We should be kind of in the upper 80s in a lot of these places here. And notice the heat indices are going to be 102, 105, 101, even into Bangor, 91 degrees is what it's going to feel like. New York, we're going to pop off real quick here. I mean, by 9 a.m., it's 90 degrees. And, man, going down into those subways, it's even hotter. So I know the feeling that you're going to have. It's going to be swampy down there. And it continues. I mean, 7 p.m. here, we're still feeling like it's 93 degrees. So the commute to work, maybe you bring an extra shirt if you're going to go out after work because it's going to be just so hot and schwitzy. Here's a look at Norfolk, uh, Virginia, and we are going to be the same. We are going to see several hours from noon essentially till 6 p.m., feeling like it's above 100 degrees and that heat index from D.C., Baltimore, all the way up to Boston. Even Maine is going to feel those heat indices well above average. We could see record setting overnight lows and as we head into the weekend, record setting highs. So we've got it on both ends here. We have possible record heat. Boston, our record on Sunday is 95 degrees. And you see that there is that potential for many of us from West Virginia all the way up into upstate New York to be hitting those records. New York, here's a look, our average high, 85 at gym. We're finally going to get back closer to that next Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, thank goodness. I was worried there for a second. Uh, yeah, the bulk of the is there. I'm going to be on whether I was I've been to the beach or not ever. Just get my certi certification yesterday. Oh, nice. My actual certificate for a beginner's mat instructor. I only have 600 more hours. Congratulations, to go. Abrams. Thanks. Hours to finish the whole certification. Oof. Yeah, that's OK. <laughs> but it's a start, guys. We got the beginner mat win. certification. <laughs> All right. So let's take you here to the beaches and talk about that rip current. It's still high over into portions of the Panhandle and some spots into the Carolinas. You have to watch out. Moderate on the East Coast beaches for you, too. East Coast beaches are always just so rough. As you hit the sand here into Pensacola, 30% chance of rain. It's going to be hot. 90. You're going to want to jump in that water at 87 degrees. And uh, Naples looking good as well. You can see it there uh, on the screen. Beautiful weather for us into Naples. Also Hollywood, Florida. You can see some of those towering queues already this morning. Going to the beach here in Panama City, 84 degrees water temperature, just a degree colder than the actual high for the day today. Nice and warm in the Gulf of Mexico. Usually it's very, very calm here in the Gulf of Mexico relative to what's happening over on the Atlantic side. But all beaches, by the way, if you think of all the beaches in the world, do you know that there's more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand here on Earth? I was told that as a kid. I was like, I don't get it. Now as an adult, I told I'm like, there's no way. All these little grains, there's no way. And then you learn that the universe is infinite and there's all these galaxies and stars and the whole thing. Anyhow, uh, Destin, Florida, you're going to see beautiful weather. That white sand beach there into Destin, Jim. All right, guys. Let's talk.